Hey guys, welcome back to One More Time. Today, I'll be comparing and reviewing the Casio G-Shock GMWB 5000 TB in all black to the Casio G-Shock GMWB 5000 TCM in camo. Both of these 2019 releases of the full metal score G-Shocks feature a Bluetooth module, STM displays, sapphire crystals, solar charging, multiband 6, DLC coatings, and a full titanium case and bracelet, allowing for these watches to weigh as little as 107 grams unsized. In this review, I'll be discussing the comfort of the band in relation to the titanium material, the toughness of the DLC coatings, the design elements of both pieces, as well as if one of these watches may indeed be superior to the other. In closing, alternatives to both watches will be proposed for both the general consumer and enthusiast alike. Let's dive into it. So when I first put this watch on wrist, I was like, wow, it disappears. And I'm not saying that because of the camel pattern on the watch. I'm saying that because of the titanium material it's made of. And titanium has two very interesting properties. The first being that it has a high heat capacity and the second being that it has a low thermal conductivity. And I know those are fancy terms, but all that means is that the watch is very resistant to temperature change. And this is something that's uh, very beneficial, especially over a stainless steel watch, because if you're in a really hot or cold climate, that watch isn't going to deviate from the temperature of your wrist, and it's going to essentially disappear on wrist. You won't even notice it's there. Will I say it's as comfortable as a resin G-Shock? Absolutely not, but I will say it is a very close second. Um, and I only say that because metal will never be as compliant as rubber. So this morphs to the wrist very well. You know, your wrist shrinks and expands with temperature, and the resin has that compliance to go with it. Uh, that said, these are my most comfortable bracelet watches I've worn. I typically don't wear watches on a bracelet. Um, I did make an exception for these watches, A, because I am a enthusiast for Square G-Shocks. I've loved them for years. I've had them for years. I've, I've owned, you know, one of the first ones ever made, and I hope to continue owning them in the future. And I have absolutely no regrets about buying either of these watches. Um, between the black model and the camel model, I think it is a total toss-up on uh, which one to get for the average consumer or you know another enthusiast looking into the watches um, very subjectively i will say that i personally prefer the all black model and i say that for a few reasons uh, the first being the versatility of the watch so an all black case design is going to go with more things you could find more opportunities to use it and you know the more you wear a watch i feel like it's easier to justify the price of it um, that said, I will also say the design elements on the all black model are better executed. So if you look at both watches, they have the same everything essentially. They have the same module, same case, same band. Uh, the only difference being that the camo model has the negative display in the camo pattern. You can even look at the uh, screws. They have the same golden screws that hold the bezel. They also have the same golden buttons across both watches. Now. Speaking of the golden buttons and design elements, if you look at the gold buttons, you get the continuity with the gold text, you get the continuity with the uh, gold ring here around the bezel, and interestingly enough, you also get this gold hue on the display from certain angles, which I think is very nice. And an outdoor light, when you look at it straight on, it actually turns to a blue hue, and I really think that's really, really awesome. Uh, you also have the slight blue here on the text where it says water resist 20 bar. And furthermore, with design elements and continuity, this watch has this polished bezel. And initially, I wasn't a big fan of it, but I think it was put there intentionally and in such a way that works. Because if you look at the edge of the first link here, it's shiny. And if you look at the edge of every link there on after, there is a shine between every single link. And there's also a shine on the edge of the links, right here. There's a shine on the pushers of the clasp. And when you wear the watch and look at it as a whole, it comes together very nicely in that regard. Uh, on the contrary, with the camo version, uh, I feel like the whole bezel is just shiny in general, but there's a disconnect between that and the band. You could see it's very shiny here. But every link thereafter, it's all matte, and uh, it just doesn't seem to come together as well. Although it is, that said, I still think it is a phenomenal watch. I think it's beautiful. It looks fantastic on wrist. I actually wear it 
just about as much as my black one. Um, can't go wrong with it. Uh, the downside is that, yeah, the black buttons do work with the, uh, the pattern, I feel like. The colors are very uh, neutral, but I don't think it works so much in terms of continuity with the, uh, the face because there's no color in the text, there's no border on the dial for the gold to match with, and I really think that the uh, camel was more of an afterthought thought, while the uh, all black one was the probably initial plan when designing these watches. Both are fantastic. Um, in terms of material durability, both watches have held up phenomenally. I'm not, I'm a klutz to say the least. I do hit my watches on door jams and stuff, and these have fared very, very, very well with the many strikes that they have endured. Um, the I will say though, and this is subjective, that the camel pattern I feel like is less, maybe slightly less scratch resistant, but also hides scratches a little better than the black version. Uh, many people watching this will know that these are DLC or diamond like carbon coated watches. That means that they should be very scratch resistant because DLC is very close in hardness to that of diamond. And there is a common saying where, you know, the only thing that can scratch diamond is, well, another diamond, right? So, you know, yeah, that's true. And what that means in theory is can the watch actually scratch itself? And my answer to that is going to be yes. So let's look at the all black model that we have here. Um, and this is just dirt, it just rubs off as you can see. But if you look at where the clasp meets the links, they collide a lot on both ends. And over time, that can cause the material to wear because both surfaces are very hard. Is it, gonna, is it gonna scratch all the way through? Maybe at some point, someday. Um, but if you look, you can see that there is scuffing on this edge here, on that last link. I'm not too concerned about it um, because when you put it on, on wrist and everything's all closed up, you don't see it. Um, is it a concern that it could happen to the other links on the watch? Certainly. And that is why I'm very careful when setting the watch down. I try to make sure the links don't fold over and collide because I'm sure that could happen. Um, going back to the camel version, being less scratch resistant, but also better at hiding scratches. If we look at where the links meet, you can see that there is no visible scuffing, but I will say personally that it looks hazy where the uh, point of contact is. And that haziness also applies to the clasp. Uh, I don't think the camera is gonna pick it up at all, but there is a slight haze to the texture. And again, the texture is raised, you can hear it. Um, it's almost like a nail file. And when it rubs on stuff, I feel like the texture itself, you know, just takes a lot of damage because it's not a flush surface. Um, but you can even see the other Sorry side. Sorry about that, my battery died. So if you look here where the link meets the clasp, you can see that it's hazy. It's not necessarily scuffed. And it's kind of one of the perks of the camo version of the watch. It does hide those scratches very, very well. Uh, between both watches, again, I do prefer the black model, but I don't think anyone can go wrong with either. And for a general consumer, I personally would avoid getting a titanium square G-Shock and look into something like the, you know, 5610 or the 5600E or even, you know, on the higher end, a GW5000. I wouldn't get anything fancier than that because I feel like the Bluetooth doesn't really add much to the watch. And again, this is just my opinion. It's very subjective. But I feel like when using a Bluetooth, you have to fiddle with the phone to sync the time and all that. And it's just nice to have an older model like this that just has the multiband, you know? You put the watch on the wrist and you forget about it. It does the multiband syncs when it needs to and the time's always there what it needs to be. I've never had an issue with that. Uh, the, the Bluetooth would only be advantageous for someone who lives out of a multiband region and can't sync with the multiband towers. Uh, other than that, I will say that uh, another perk of, you know, getting a the cheapest square G-Shock you can if you like the style is that you know, they all have mineral crystals. Anything except the titanium square is going to have a mineral crystal. So for me personally, um, I don't see the point in getting a, you know, metal bracelet on a square when, you know, the crystal is the Achilles heel. And it's going to have the same Achilles heel as a cheaper G-Shock. I, I think they did a good job <coughs> with the uh, sapphire on these watches. I think that, you know, it made the package come together as a whole very nicely. You know, for me, it's, it's kind of, it adds to the, you know, an eternal aspect of the watch. It's like, oh, this is something that's going to last a long time. There, there's no resin on it to degrade or rot. The, the crystal isn't going to scratch on me. So for long-term use, um, I really, really, really enjoy how these were built. 
And again, for me personally, like I can deal with a scratch on a watch case. It doesn't bother me too much. But once the crystal gets scratched, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a big bothering point. And I say that because it, it, it obscures the main function of the watch, and that's to tell time. And that, that's why I say that if you're going to buy a cheaper G-Shock, again, this is my opinion, stick with the GW5000. I don't think that you know something uh, this fancy or even the other metal squares are worth it until you're kind of at that enthusiast stage. Again, these are just my opinions, but if you guys have any questions, comments, you know, please throw them below. I love hearing from you guys. Uh, I do try, I do, I do take into consideration <laughs> uh, what you guys say. I am trying to help keep these videos in better focus. I learned that lighting plays a big role. And again, thank you for watching.